Hi guys and welcome to a Mike's Positively Technical World video on these two little puppies here. We're going to start off straight in the uh, bat. It's the WX744 soldering iron. Uh, it's made by Works. It's part of the Maker X series whereby you get the Maker X hub, which is there. Attach it to one of the PowerShare 20 volt batteries. You get an umbilical cord at the end of it and then that provides you with negative in the middle positive left is uh, a variable voltage output via this variable resistor on the top here uh, and then you've got constant full flat out power on the right hand side these plug into the back of each one of the tools uh, we're going to start looking at this which is wx744 it's a soldering iron it does a temperature range from 300 uh, sorry 200 degrees celsius right the way up to 480 degrees and to test it, we're going to be doing quite a simple uh, test. We're going to be ramping it up probably somewhere ranging around about 360, 380 degrees. And we're going to be connecting this XT60 connector here in the bottom left hand corner, bring it into frame uh, with some very handy 14 gauge cable. It's a silicon based cable. It's uh, already got the heat shrinking ready and uh, waiting. I've taken approximately, I don't know, three, three, four mil of uh, the connector off. And then we're going to be soldering that onto there. Then we're going to do the same with the negative or black wire onto here. And then we're going to be using this, which is the WX745, I believe. 743. Go in the opposite direction, Mike. Yep. The 743 um, to uh, do the heat shrink. And uh, this is a basically a small uh, blowtorch gun. It's electric powered. It runs the same system as the Maker X, uh, so the umbilical goes in the back there, and this runs at constant about 200 degrees or thereabouts, so it should be ample enough to uh, do the heat shrink. So that's uh, our little soldering project. Obviously this is stone cold, um, it's virtually brand new, I have used it just to make sure it works. Um, you can see you can interchange the tips on this. Quite simply the collar comes off, obviously do it when it's cold. Then the tips are the standard type, so you can use whatever type of tip you want under the sun. It does come with a load of calligraphy tips, which we might as well have a quick look at. Obviously, I'm going to be using the soldering. So in the bag of accessories, which is this, you get with each one of the ones where we buy it in a kit, where we buy it tool only to enhance your connection, so you speak. You get this very handy little stand. That's for it to rest on, just like so. You also get a silicone grip. The silicone grip is designed to go on the end in this direction. I can't really put it on because it's going to take a little, quite a while to get on. But see, it gives you a bit enhanced grip. Uh, you can use it the other way around as well, i found, and that then ensures that you don't potentially touch this. It's made of silicon, so it's heat resistant. Whether or not it's heat resistant, right away up to 480 degrees C. I probably won't want to try it, to be honest, but you can if you really want to. Um, point proving, I suppose. Um, and then in the collection of bits here, you've got loads of pyrography pieces with various patterns. Where else are we today? We're over here. You've got like a little shape bit there a bit that shaped like that for doing some really really interesting pyrography stuff i'm sure if you're into your pyrography these will mean a lot to you i'm quite obviously not into my pyrography um i've done a couple of little bits and pieces in the past trying pyrography but never really seem to get enough heat into it or use the correct type of wood i don't think um you've also got various other flat patterns some little tiny come on focus there we are little tiny tips they could be good for soldering i suppose they're solid brass it's worth noting um and you also have this which is the last one i'll really show you because the other ones are here yes but um he says trying to get it out of the packet There's this little bean uh it's like a micro blowtorch tip let's be honest uh, that'd be really really good for really intricate detail and soldering more than anything um yeah and you also get these tip ends that do some stuff <laughs> I, I i think they 
these pieces here screw into them. Attach to them. No, they don't. I have no idea what they do. There you go. Self confessions. Should really open the packet and look through them before I start doing one of these videos. Might help. I ain't got a Scooby Doo how these attach. I really don't. Magic, I suppose. Yeah, magic. We'll go with magic. Magic's a good option. I think they do. Yeah. They do actually screw into this reason why you've got two adapters. You've got one for the finer shapes. Oh, it look, looks like a. Yeah, it looks like one of those. <laughs> um, and then you've got one for the thicker ends. So they've got two different thread sizes for two different size tips. So you can do your pyrography and change between the tips, between soldering iron tips and pyrography tips. And that's very cool. I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. Um, pyrography, like I said, I've tried. I might give it another try with this. I might do a future video just on pyrography. But today we're really looking at soldering capability. We're really looking also for the fact being this is portable. Yeah, I do have a soldering station of my own. Um, it's very good. It was quite expensive as well. Uh, it cost one of the region about £130, and that was only a, a China Bay special, if you like. So it wasn't even a, a genuine real deal. Um, and yeah, it's quite expensive. So I mean, the Maker X um, the prices for these is about £59.99. That's pounds. Fifty-nine pounds and ninety-nine pence. I believe the uh, price does equate straight over into dollars almost directly. So here you'll be able to see when I turn it on. It should have a backlit display. Oh, it actually worked right on cue and everything. So you can see there it's flashing away at its default setting, which is three hundred and sixty degrees C, and then you can see quite clearly the temperature gauge rising. I'm sure there's a song in there somewhere. I won't start singing. You're all right. Uh, going up to one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty. And rising and this is very good whilst we're waiting for this I should put this back on the stand down here and we're just gonna put a bit of flux because we're gonna uh, tin up these ends of the 14 gauge silicon multi-strand cable we'll do the positive one yeah I'm sure you've got your own way of doing soldering and I'm sure it's completely different to mine so you can see there, the relatively quick light up time, or heat up time that you have on this. The solder that I'm using is 6040 and it's one mil thickness. Bare stuff really, he says. Let's just... Do 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 do. We'll see, because it's multi strand, it's going to sap quite a lot of the heat away from the tip fairly quickly, which is why we tin up first. flux yes I do hold my breath when I do this sort of stuff just because it aids a bit of concentration and a little bit of steadiness <laughs> yeah, maybe you can learn something there if you hold your breath while soldering it steadies your hand a little bit especially if you're a bit elderly and a bit shaky like me let's just flux this little bit in here I we'll probably want to do I've got loads of solder so I'm probably just going to run this straight in here at the top let me just take you down Bear with 
two seconds. We'll drop you in on the action. A bit of shaky camera when the old stand goes down. I'll just rest the microphone there. I haven't bothered going to get the proper microphone stand because I went a bit on tour with it the other day. Doing some non works related stuff. Don't worry, no other tools, just something else. Film related. You can see that nicely pumping the heat into that XT60 connector. No problems there at all. The idea is that we're just going to form a little pool of solder. Introduce the cable. Play a little swapsy game there. <laughs> he says, trying to do this and work around a microphone, camera stand, and make the camera angle good and the lighting good is actually quite more difficult than it looks. No one also try not to burn yourself as well, Mike, you know. A little bit of blow, yes. We'll try, I think maybe. Floating a little bit more solder in behind there. This is relatively low current this is going to be handling this cable I'm probably completely overkilling it with 14 gauge cable actually I am so the main joints on this that I'm actually making I'll show you what it is in a second um, I've got 10 gauge connectors on <laughs> and they're XT90 connectors these are rated for Serious amounts of power. Uh, it's 10 gauge cable. You can quite clearly see there um, Similar sort of stuff just a bit bigger and, uh, That's going to be for our multimeter um, Certain products require a battery uh, terminal so the pseudo um, Battery this is an empty battery that's connected to a watt meter in line um, and then that then connects to a, uh, a pseudo battery connector uh, that I just showed you and then this is basically gonna have it so that the uh, the inline part is gonna have the battery temperature and the individual cell voltage detector as well and that's gonna be connected using XT60 connectors it's part of my little project to figure out how much power each works product saps and how powerful they really are um, so yeah, I will then present that data to you once I know it. I'm sure it'd be very interesting to some of you and maybe a complete waste of time to others. Grab a little bit of the old solder again. So I'm trying to keep that in frame. Obviously it's still kept at 360 degrees. I might potentially just ramp it up a little bit. You can ramp it up by 10 degrees at a time. Um, if you're um, more au fait with Fahrenheit, and I do know that I've got quite a few American viewers on here, I think you push plus and minus together simultaneously. Hold for five seconds. Or is it the 
power and plus, he says, fumbling around. Or is he just push and hold power? No, that turns it off. Ah, there you go. Push and hold power, uh, plus and minus whilst uh, in the off screen. And it says uni, which is units. I'm sure if you actually bothered reading the instructions rather than doing what I'm trying to do. You can do it, trust me. Uh, I don't know how to. It's not my... I, I like working in Celsius, but I measure in feet and inches. Well, unilateral, I guess you could say. So, yeah. I'm just going to try and ram some more solder down the hole on the left-hand side. Try and work underneath the camera. Probably just going to flux solder itself boom in it goes it's very very nice flow rate on that especially when using the right size solder you should only really use small gauge solder for small stuff and obviously if you're Doing some bigger stuff, use bigger amounts of solder. It kind of makes sense, but. Basically what that has done is just wicked all of the solder straight into the cable showing that I didn't actually um, put enough solder directly into the cable. Too bad. I have done better joints. Just gonna try and put a bit more flux into it. Just see if I can get a bit smoother. Yeah. Well, it's far from perfect, guys. It is far from perfect. But that's my quality of my soldering, not the tool. And also probably a bit to do room temperature as well. It's quite cold in my workshop at the moment. I could put the heater on, but it's gas powered and it's very noisy. So I'll leave that off. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is the soldering iron. Um, those joints, very firm. Yeah, really firm. Um, nearly firm enough to lift the vise between the two cables. I won't do it because there's no point in ripping it out for the sake of it. Um, so I'm just going to turn that off now. We turn it off the same way we turned it on. It dies down. Leave it to one side on the uh, the cast iron deck of the bandsaw. Uh, it's also worth noting as well, there's no need for uh, for variable temperature on the soldering iron at all. It doesn't have variable temperature input. Uh, same with this. This is going to get noisy, guys, so I do apologise whilst it's on. Um, there's no on-off button on the body on this either, so it has to be done on the hub. I will just say as well, again, before I get started, it does have this very handy spring-loaded uh, catch stand on the side. So you can then put it down on your work surface and do whatever you're going to be doing. All I'm going to do is just slide the heat shrink down 
over the joint that we just made. And I'll do both of them simultaneously, otherwise you tend to get a bit of heat dissipated left in the connector. And that can cause you issues. So I'm just going to plug it in and then braze away. I'm just going to hold it like a pen, a very large fat pen, but it takes approximately 30 seconds to heat up in fairness to it, but very quickly you'll see you start getting a reaction. from the heat shrink. I'm going to try and do the black one first. Or the negative wire. It's not really negative, it's just... Well, it's whatever I decide because it's not going to be a positive or negative outcome. It's going to be a... Uh, one's a temperature sensor and one is a... Uh, a single battery source. Okay, so to stop it, we're just going to pull the stand down. This heat shield across the front is actually still cold to the touch. The hot element is actually encased inside here and you can't touch it. This is very, very cold to the touch. If actually, I'll just hold that there all day long. It's 100%, it's the same temperature as the rest of the gun. There's no temperature variation in it at all. So we can just put that down. Even just in front there, that's still very hot just there. So be careful whereabouts you do leave it running. Um, you can easily start burning various bits and pieces. Um, I have tried obviously doing actual burning, burning with it. It doesn't get hot enough to do that um, unless you're very close to it and you've got very, very dry wood, in which case it sets fire to it quite easily. <laughs> the closer you are, the hotter it is, etc. cetera. But um, yeah, let's have a look at the joint that we just made. Take out the vise. And as you can see, the heat shrink has shrunk extremely effectively all the way around. Um, it's probably just a little tiny bit less just there. But that's probably more the fact being I didn't have an accessible angle from where I am. Actually, let's just turn it on. little bit of OCD, nothing to it, all right? Okay, make sure the stand's out, pull it down, and then off at the hub. And there you have it, guys. That's uh, a beautifully soldered and finished XD60 connector. As you can see just there. The heat shrink on. We even got it the right way around as well. You can see there, positive there, and negative. If it likes to come into focus, do you want to come into focus? Yeah, there we go. You see, you got the right way around. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Um, you've got your uh, you combined your WX seven four four. A WX743. Um, I think I've covered just about everything there. Obviously, if there's anything else you want to ask me about these two products, um, in the comments section, you can always ask away anything you want at all. And uh, I try my best to answer it. I try my best to answer it as quickly as possible. However, also try to accurate, uh, accurately answer it 
um, as well. Um, sometimes it's very subjective, some of the things I get asked, I do try and answer everything as honestly and independently as possible, even though it's quite obvious I'm a little bit of a fan of my works products. <laughs> um, that said, obviously, there's always room for improvement with everything. Um, I'd probably say that this could probably do with being variable and maybe a bit hotter. Um, I find it a little tiny bit cold, but then again, it's safe, so you would never be able to turn around and get any other heat gun that I know of on the market and be able to touch the end like that. Um, likewise, the, the soldering iron, as a soldering iron, it's fantastic. It's portable. Remember this as well. This isn't a mains-based solution, so it's never going to be as good um, as obviously a real decent soldering setup. That said, it is digital output, um, so it's got digital display on it, and it does seem to keep a very, very decent temperature. I have independently tested the temperature outputs, and they are within about two degrees of the actual tip temperature, uh, which bear in mind that the actual tip temperature it's using is underneath the uh, ceramic element rather than the actual tip. Uh, two degrees really isn't but too bad at all obviously after a bit of usage it will eventually decay slightly uh, but if you look after your tip and keep it in tip top condition pardon the pun um, you will find that they will uh, last you as long as basically necessary um, that said it's probably only really designed more for like i said field repairs stuff where uh, you really need something out in the middle of nowhere where you don't have normal power um, really really handy very decent piece of kit both of those extremely uh, cool. I really can't stress how um, durable they are as far as a portable product goes and the accessories that come with them they have got brass tips on them they are good like I said if you're into your pyrography I'm sure you can make up your own mind with these various tips that come with it and um, yeah I like it it's, it's a nice product like I said uh, this I think it's around about um, I think it's about 49.99 54.99 sorry about that it's about uh 50 50 to 60 pounds for the um the air blowgun um and the soldering iron is one of the more expensive products from the works maker x series and it ranks in at 59 pounds and 99 pence or currently available from the works or an online website or from their ebay store as well as amazon its um, and any other good retailers that supply work stores as always guys thank you very much for watching Feel free to obviously like, subscribe, comment, etc. Like I said, I do read the comments. I do try and keep up to date with it. I've got a couple of more uh, works Maker X products specifically in the pipeline. Uh, I might as well go quickly go through them and plug them. What's it here? You've got the uh, the glue gun, the air blower tool, the zip snip we've already covered. link to video maybe here uh, and the small mini angle grinder which is kind of like the rotary tool but with a 90 degree neck on it and slightly more power those are the ones i've got left to test uh, oh yeah and uh, there's mine other detail there's a there's a nice little airbrush as well i can't wait for doing that <laughs> it's gonna be so messy and uh so live as well because i'm not gonna be able to test it beforehand so yeah it, it is what it is okay and it will be what it will be but i'm sure you'll uh, enjoy the the presentation of either way and as always guys take care of yourself have a nice time and i'll catch up with you guys in the next video